goodness, I've got a fuzzy in my hair. Okay. I guess that's what you get when you make everything out of blanket yarn. You get fuzzies places. Good morning, Erica. Wow, you are quick. I hope you had a wonderful new year too. Um, I did have a a good new year. Um, can't believe we're already on January 4th. It means it's my sister-in-law's birthday. Happy birthday, Sierra. Actually, I actually have to remember to talk to her because I doubt she'll see this. Um, yeah, it was a good, it was a good new year. I hope you had a good new year. Well, I hope everyone had a good new year, but Erica's in the chat right now. So hi. So yeah, because it was New Year's, there was a lot of festivities going on. And once again, I don't feel like I made a whole lot of progress. But and then when I like sit and think about it, I obviously did make some good progress. So I should stop beating myself up. So the first thing we're going to talk about, because this uh, video is, this chat is titled A Few More Foxes. Uh, I finished my second fox. So this one was the first one, and this one, the things that I didn't like about it is that the, the neck was too floppy, and, <clears throat> and the body was a little bit too big. So last week I showed you guys the body on, I had, I had the body up to like right here, and it was, I really didn't like it, so I tore it, I tore it back down to the very top of the neck and started again. Good morning, Denisha and Cynthia. Thanks for hopping on. Um, and so what I what I ended up doing, the changes I made from this one, this one has a bigger head to so that I didn't have to make the body smaller because I like the size of the body. But on this one here, it looked it looked like it was a little chubby fox, <laughs> which I'll make a chubby fox someday. I just didn't want this one to be a chubby fox. So, um, so I made the head bigger, so it's a little bit more proportional. And then when I, after doing that, I had to go ahead and make the arms and the legs bigger. So in this one, I made them smaller so that it would look uh, more in proportion to the size of the head. Um, and so then on this one, I had to make them a little bit bigger because I'd made the head bigger. So it is slightly bigger. And I don't know why this is. Um, something that is true, but I cannot seem to get a, a foxtail on centered. Like, like, look at that. It's, I, yeah, it's so frustrating. And then this is my very first one. And it's also not perfectly centered. It's skewed off that way as well. I don't know why. But I am, I apparently struggle with getting foxtails. But they're kind of cute, even if they are not centered at all <laughs> so yeah so I got this pattern um, I had to finish it up before no I finished it New Year's Day um, so January 1st so that I could get it off to testers so they could go so they can test it um, for the next three weeks so that I can finish it up the last week of January so it can come out February so this is going to be February's pattern. If you're um, one of my Patreon uh, supporters, you'll get it for the $5. Isn't it cute? And if not, it'll, you can just find it on my website and Ravelry. It'll be up there on February 1st, probably. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think it's, it's adorable. I would say my one, one thing that I don't love about it is that it looks, <clears throat> I'm afraid it looks too much like my teddy bear, which I don't have. I don't even remember what happened to my teddy bear, which is very silly to say, but I, I don't. I must have given it to somebody, and I just don't even remember. Um, but, I mean, the, the pattern is different. The, the, body, the body pattern is almost the exact same. The head is, is similar, but obviously different. We've got color changes. And I, I tried to give it a little bit more of a like pooch <laughs> right here on the sides um, that the teddy bear doesn't have at all. 
Um, but a snout is similar. Obviously, the ears are different, arms, legs, tail are different, but it, I'm just afraid that it looks too much like the teddy bear. But it's a very cuddly size. So I love that. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking for a second and read your guys' comments because you guys are all hopping in here and saying hello, and I'm just chit chatting away. Hello, Sarah and Donna. Good morning. And hello, Mary. Thank you guys for, for hopping in here. And yes, Happy New Year all around. I hope everyone's been having a good New Year so far. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone is uh, fending off the New Year's. I was going to say diseases, but that doesn't, right. you know, the, the colds, the yuck that seems to be coming around I'm afraid I'm getting it that's why it's top of mind is because I can feel it here and you know it's unpleasant anyway so the because I've been on the fox high um if that makes sense I've been riding the fox wave because you know I've got I've got these two um I figured I would start working on the lovey which I don't think I'm going to be able to release in February as well, because I haven't finished the pattern. Um, so I've, I've gotten started on it. This is the head so far. Doesn't look like much, but it will get there. Um, <clears throat> and then I've been working on the, the blanket. And this has actually caused, caused me kind of a lot of struggle, which is silly, but it has. So on these guys, um, I used I used this blanket, this fleece, um, which I think is so cute. I really, really love it. Um, I got this at Joann's. I cannot remember the name of the fleece, but if you guys want it, I'm sure I can find it on their online store, and I could put it in a in a link below. Um, so I, I really love this one. It is thinner than the Lux fleece, but I think it's a blizzard fleece. So it, it holds up still pretty good to being crocheted through. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's not as strong as, as Lux, but but I love it. Um, and so I my idea for what I wanted to do with the border um, was I would make, I have like one right or two right here. <laughs> they don't look very good because I keep ripping it out and ripping it out and ripping it out. Um, was that I'd make little like baubles or little, um, I can't even remember the name of the stitch, little stitches basically here um, to make it look like I've got these little like orange flowers, like poppies or something like that. I guess poppies are a little more red, but, but just have these little like flowers um, going along the edge because, you know, I've got flowers here in the, in the blanket and the the orange color that i have here is very similar to this orange of the fox so i figured like maybe it could look like um little flowers and it would also um kind of bring the orange from you know the lovey into the border and it would all just look put together and adorable but i am really really struggling with these flowers, like, like I've gotten, I've gotten like probably to here like four different times. And then I just keep tearing it out because I don't like how it's turning out. I've tried like probably four different, four or five different, um, flower ideas. And as soon as you start getting them in a row, they no longer look like flowers. They just look like puffs or baubles or fans, you know, like they don't, really read like flowers and so that's bothering me and so I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet so we'll see on that one hello Michelle thanks for hopping in today Sarah says she loves that fleece it is cute isn't it um and that it would be cute with a deer lovey it really would it really would um especially since it already has the deer the deer motif going on oop I threw it upside down yeah it's got the deer motif which is really cute. Um, I haven't actually made a deer lovey yet. 
I was going to a long time ago and long time ago, meaning like July of last year um, and didn't get very far with it. <clears throat> so I still have the blankets that I made for it, but <laughs> anyway. Hello, Nina or Nina. Thanks for having um, Erica's suggesting maybe flowers every three to five stitches. I could give that a try. I, I definitely need to, to play around with it a little bit more. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Annie's suggesting the same thing. Spread the flowers out and have a low motif between them. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to have to definitely give this a try. Thank you. Hi, Camille. How are you? Cam Camille at Dolly Face Knit. Um, hi, Annie. Sorry, I'm just reading comments, which I'm sure is really boring for you guys to watch. Um, Nina asks, are you making more videos how to make the cute, cute, cute animal? Um, yeah, so that was one thing I did get done while making this box. I've had repeatedly um, people ask for videos on how to sew on the eyes, videos for attaching limbs. And so I finally <laughs> I finally recorded them with this box. I recorded sewing on the eyes, um, sewing on the arms, and then sewing on the legs. So those are three separate videos. Um, I also recorded shaping the head for this one. So I guess I've got four videos on that. Um, and I just, I haven't yet had time to sit down, edit those videos, render them, get them uploaded. But that will be happening um, this coming week. So if you guys, you know, this next week, if you guys see like four videos come out from me, it's going to be that just kind of, you know, breaking down how I um, attach things. Um, because it, it can be challenging and it, it's hard when you're trying to write it down in a pattern to to share every little bit. Otherwise, you'd end up like with a massive paragraph that you're like, no one's going to read this anyway. So, yeah. Well, Camila, I'm glad you're doing well. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nina. Um, so, yeah. So, I am I am working on videos for this. I keep telling myself that I should try... Um, I should make more tutorial videos like um, like crochet along sorts of things and maybe sell them because I've had enough people asking and saying like that would that they would really like that. And I just haven't found the time because it's it's a big endeavor to like record every single row of a project. So I haven't yet, but I will. <clears throat> So, thank you, Annie, for loving the fox. <laughs> Nina says, yes, do that. Yes, I I should. I'll work on it. But, but in the meantime, I will put up this coming week, I'll put up those videos on sewing the eyes, attaching the arms, shaping the head, and sewing on the legs so that those will, those will be out there to help. And, and those are pretty standard like across the board um for how I put together my patterns especially the the baby patterns um because yeah that'll that'll help with attaching all of the limbs and stuff so yeah <coughs> and Carla's seconding that thing yes video tutorials please all right I I might I might set that as one of my goals for the year to put out a couple more of those. I'll have to think about it because I still haven't set like yearly goals because I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure what what is going on in my life. My life is very up in the air. So that's exactly how I feel. And Nina says my kids love the animal. Oh, thank you. It makes me really happy. Um, so the one other thing I have had a chance to work on this week is um, I told you guys last week that I was making flowers. Let me see if I can pull some out. 
Yeah, that I was making flowers for um, a a Heidi Bear's pattern. So, um, so I'm kind of t I'm taking the concept of a pattern, changing it to work with burnout blanket yarn, and then I'm going to make her Lolo Bear. Um, and I didn't follow the instructions as well as I should. Well, I, I thought, you know, when you get in the groove and you're like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I kind of made a mess of things. So, yeah. So this is what I have. And it is held together right now with bobby pins. Um, but I realized after I... Um, I sewed all of this together because I did top, um, I did like slip stitching together instead of uh, the way that it's written out in the pattern because I'm, I haven't been able to quite figure it out. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, sewed all of those together and then realized that I was supposed to sew the pentagons here, not hexagons. So it looks like I'm just making a blanket, not actually like a bear. So. I've got to take this apart and finish making the pentagons because I'd made all the hexagons and yeah. And and try again. So you know, I'm I'm learning. I think it'll I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be really cool when it's done. I've just never done anything like this before. So it's it's interesting. But I like it. I, I like that I've got kind of a sunflower look going on. I think it's pretty. Anyway, that's kind of it. So now I'm going to talk to you guys here. <coughs> See who hopped into the chat while I was while I was chatting. All right. <laughs> Sandy says, hey, Val, happy new year. Happy new year, Sandy. And Christy. Christy says, I've been trying that owl back there. I have frogged a million times. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is it? <laughs> this guy you're trying to make Henry you should if you want you can tell me what part is causing you the most issue um uh oh Cynthia says one of one of the goals should be to finish the Christmas book yes that is one of them you're very right um let's see Sarah says, your patterns are great. I love that you link the YouTube videos on the different kinds of stitches. Thank you. I'm glad that's helpful. Um, my plan is to, once I release all of those videos on like constructing the, like how to attach arms, sewing on eyes, etc. cetera, um, I'll also link those in the fox pattern so that those can be found a little bit more easy. And then I'll try and remember to attach them when every new pattern coming out. So Annie says, I think our goal should be to just do our best every day. We can't ask more from ourselves than that. That is true. That is true. I definitely struggle with that. I tend to be a, I was explaining this to my mom the other day, that I, um, if I understand in my mind that I could do something, I feel like I should have done it already. You know, like, like, I'm not very patient with myself. As soon as in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I'm like, well, why haven't I done it already? Why is that not already done? Why, why am I take, why am I so slow? So yes, I have to work on patience. That's absolutely something I could work. Uh, let's see. Nina says, thank you uh, for your work and for the tutorial. Thanks, Nina. And Erica said, yeah, I, so I sewed the chubby llama head on last night upside down. Oh, I'm sorry. I've seen that a couple of times. So yeah, I need to probably do something on that. Hello, April. Thanks for hopping in. Um, Erica says, I love the Heidi Bear patterns. I still need to purchase them. Yeah, they're intense. Like, like really cool and also like way out of my wheelhouse. But hey, we're, we're trying something new. So that's good, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, Sandra says, hello, happy new year from Orlando. Hello, Sandra. 
Um, <laughs> Sandy says, another memberhood of the Sandy Sisterhood. Sandra Gonzalez. I love that. Uh, Christy says, the invisible slip stitch um, is causing the problems. My stiffest fall off and makes my feather rose out of whack. Oh, your stitches fall off and make your rose out of whack. Interesting. Um, so to be perfectly honest, Christy, I in the pattern, I do say use the invisible slip stitch. Um, but I didn't when I made this one. So the reason why I said to do that is because it, it helps, it, at least in my experience, it helps rose not like twist so much um and if you if if you're someone who has a lot of spiral in your crocheting um i i put that in there because a couple of my testers came back and their like bodies were skewed like the feather lines went like this and 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 the the bodies were really skewed because just the way they crochet allows for a lot of spiraling and that's that is um <clears throat> It's unique to every person, and and there's not what really any way that I know that that stops spiraling. I have looked into this, I have tried it, and I just haven't figured it out. So, um, so so if you want to just negate the invisible slip stitch, you can, um, and and hopefully that would work for you. That's that's my only thought that I can give you on that one. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Tweety Me Too Coleman says, hello, this is Charmaine from Minnesota. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, let's see. Annie says, I used to do so many things in a day. Super type A personality. Was that the cause of all my autoimmune disorders? Who knows? It forced me to slow down and appreciate more of the beauty in the world. I I could see that. I could see that. I need to. Like I said I need to work on being so like uptight, but, and and more patient with myself. Because I think if I can be more patient with myself, I can be more patient with others. So you know, life just gets better, right? Ah, uh, let's see. Um, oh, Erica suggesting to Christy to watch the Highland Cow tutorial that it helped her. Okay, I could see that. Hello, Marty. She's saying, hi, Valerie. I'm making the Penelope Pig Lovey. Have you tried attaching the blanket to the stuffed animal in a different way other than the doll assembly? Joanne's and Hobby Lobby do not have them. Um, <clears throat> I have, the only other thing I've done is I've taken a button and put it on the underside of the blanket and then put the lovey or the head on top, and then just sewed through the holes of the button um, using either a thin yarn or a really heavy um, thread. And that has worked in the past. Um, also, I get my um, I get my doll joints from Amazon because yeah, I haven't found them at Hobby Lobby or Joanne's either. So Amazon is, is the only place I've really been able to find them consistently. Christy, Christy talking about the owl says, oh, I'm so glad it's not just me. Yeah. So we, we all make mistakes. I was talking to um, one of my, my friends via the internet, Joyce, and, and we were talking about the about sewing on eyes because she was asking for a tutorial um, and it was like right after I had finished this very first box and I was telling her I was like I sewed the eyes on and they were so bad I like put them up too high and they were in the like it was just really bad and so I had to cut them off and she was like I'm so glad it's not just me like of course it's not just you I make mistakes all of the time and I'm getting really good at frogging things and cutting them off and trying again because <laughs> that's what you've got to do when you're 
trying to, I mean, design a pattern or you're trying to make something. So let's see. Let's see. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just reading through these comments. I, I think it's really awesome that you guys are, are helping each other in the comments, you know, offering different suggestions or, or telling each other how you overcame an issue. I think it's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let's see. What was your do 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 do? I'm gonna scroll up here. Charmaine says, I need to work on the sheep you did last year. This year, your patterns are first on my list to make. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take that in. Uh, Annie says, that sounds like a good idea with the buttons. Makes it easier to uh, with the, wash the blanket. <coughs> yeah, I have, I got suggestions also to um, like sew, sew the blanket, sew the button just onto the blanket, not sandwich the blanket in between the button and the head and sew them together. Um, but to just sew the button on the blanket and then on the bottom of the levy, that way you could just hook it onto the button. So they were technically interchangeable. So, yeah. April says, I'm trying to get all of my whips listed and finished so I can clear my conscience and give my projects my full attention. I like that. And Denisha seconds that, saying that's what I'm doing right now. And he says, great idea. <laughs> April says, they're all laying in front of me right now. Yeah, I've, I've got a few I need to finish up as well. When I, like, most of the time I'm like, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. And then I actually look and I'm like, hmm, there are a couple I need to work on. Like, I've, I've still never, that loopy hedgehog thing back there I still don't have a pattern for that because it was too big for a hedgehog it was like a hedgehog porcupine and I just haven't finished it up so I need to do that let's see Donna says I've listed out my whips too but I'm worried about forgetting some how many did I actually start on that's a good question Erica says, the baby elephant and lovey is my next project. Nice. This is exciting. There's so many fun things to make. So many fun ideas. So I did uh, go yarn shopping. And I got some of this. I think they call it so sun soaked. The sun soaked color. It's a little bit. It's not quite as bright as. Where did I put it? <laughs> like this, this yellow is the burnet blanket bright. And this one's a little bit more of a burnt color. <coughs> um, but I'm, I'm thinking this would make a good color for a giraffe. I just have to find a good brown because I could not find a good brown anywhere. So that was a little frustrating. But I got I got three balls of this because whenever I do make the draft, I want to make it really big. Um, so that's kind of my I hope I can get this done this year thing. Um, and he says, I wish you would do a book. Yes, that would be awesome. I don't know when I will do that. <laughs> um, I want to as well. Um, the thing that I'm struggling with is well there are a number of things but what i'll list at least the the two that come to mind right off number one i feel like it would need to be a collection like um like there would be a theme to it either farm animals or woodland animals or safari animals or something like that um and at the moment, if you can, you know, kind of tell from what I have out there, it's all over the map. I've got, I've got whales and bunnies and sheep and deer and rabbits and dogs and, you know, like it's, it's kind of just bleh, that there is no like, theme to them at the moment, other than the fact that they're my creations. 
So, so that's one. I I need to come up with a theme and stick with it because I have, I have tried in the past to be like, all right, I am going to do these kinds of animals. Um, and the only time it's worked was when I did the Christmas ornaments and I had a theme for that. So maybe I'm learning how to do themes because I did finally do it on that one, but I don't like, like it's kind of a struggle for me because almost as soon as I make a, like some rules, like these are things we are, you know, we're going to work within these parameters. Um, like the rebellious side of me is like, uh, no, we're not. And then I, you know, I get inspired by something completely off the map and we go and do something crazy. So, <clears throat> so that is one thing. And then the second thing is self-publishing. Um, I've done some research into it and it, it seems kind of challenging. <laughs> oh, I live in Henry the Great. I'll just hold him on my lap. Um, so it's uh, like, um, the, the only thing I've, I've, my, my sister and I have looked into this because my sister is writing a book and I'm going to do the illustrations for it. I started on it and life has been crazy. So I haven't done worked on it in a while. Um, but so she did a lot of research into self-publishing and um, from kind of what we could gather, the easy way to do it um, would probably be to go through Amazon. But Amazon tries very hard to keep you within a certain like price range. Basically, they want your your book to be around $10. Um, I know that's how they are for ebooks. So I'll have to look again at like physical books. Um, <clears throat> but if I sold a book of my patterns, it would it would be, you know, it it would be a lot more than ten dollars because we're talking, you know, probably ten of my patterns, which are often about seven dollars each. So already that's like seventy bucks. And then you add the fact that we're not doing digital; we're doing a physical product. And I'd probably because it was a book, I would. I don't know, probably shrink it down a little bit, do like 65 or something like that. And, but, you know, but then it's like, I, I don't know. It's, it, I just, I have to do more, more research into it. Um, <clears throat> and, and figure out a way that it could really work. Um, but those are those are my two like big concerns at the moment. So, <coughs> um, Erica saying she'd like a baby animals and lovies book. That would be a cute one. At the beginning of last year, I actually like planned out a lovies book, just like rough sketched it, and I liked the idea. Um, but yeah, babies and lovies would be cute. Monica says she loves that yellow. You can go with the browns you use for the deer and the fox. Um, yeah. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Cynthia says, I like the mishmash of animals, too. It keeps you give, keeps you guessing and gives a lot of anticipation. I like that. Hello, Black Rose. I'm guessing that's what it is. BLK Rose. I can just call you Rose. That'll work. Um... <clears throat> Cynthia says she's seen books for a lot more than ten dollars. Okay, I'll I'll have to look at it. Uh, Annie says do animals encompass a lot of animals? That's true. However, you could make them small books um, as a series. Um, send an idea to one of the crafting book publishers. That's a good idea. I've not not thought about reaching out to crafting book publishers but that makes a lot of sense that's kind of what I do like sorry Henry Blah. he is just not feeling steady today um <clears throat> so um yeah it's a good idea Carla says oh happy or sorry hi Monica <laughs> and Carla says happy new year to all I was wondering do you uh, how do you store slash organize all of your blanket yarn due to the size of the skein? So mine are all just in these totes back here. Um, this is a, I think it's a 12 by 12 cube, so I can actually fit four skeins 
in there. Um, and I am not like, like, you know, there are kind of two camps of people. There are people who crochet and there are people who hoard yarn. And a lot of people are, are in both of those camps. They're crocheters and yarn hoarders or yarn lovers or, you know, like get inspired by yarn or just love having it around. Um, and I am mostly a crocheter, not as much a yarn hoarder. I will buy it when it's, uh, when it's on a good sale. Um, but I, I actually get a little bit anxious when I have too much yarn because it feels like, because what it feels like to me is like projects that are not done because I, I look at the yarn and I'm like, oh, you are for X project. You are for X project. And if I have too much, the, like, like it starts to feel like pressure on me. Like I look at this yarn and it's saying like, Hey, why are, why haven't you made me? Why haven't you made me? Why haven't you made me? And so I, it, it's silly, but I, I get, like, I can't have too much yarn. Otherwise I feel overwhelmed. So I don't store a lot of it. So <clears throat> that is just the truth, the truth. Anyway. <clears throat> Um, Sharon says, I love the fox. I've been waiting for the fox. Well, thank you. I'm really happy with it too. Um, Rose says, I just got two books for my daughter for, or from my daughter for Christmas. Both were $12 each plus the mailing fee, but cheaper than in the store. I can see that. Um, Erica says, I recently bought a baby lovey book for four pounds off Amazon. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sure. I can all, I'm sorry, tweeting me too, Coleman. I'm just going to call you Coleman. I know you put your first name up there, but I can't remember right now. Um, she said, do you have any new animal patterns coming out? Would you do any doll patterns? Um, I have, so the, the chubby goat, which is right there. Um, just came out the beginning of January. The fox is going to come out February 1st. Um, so yeah, those those ones are coming out. And then I, I mean, I've got plenty of other things to work on. The, I still, yeah, I need to f finish up my whips as well. Um, so that would include like the chubby cow and the chubby donkey. Um and now the fox lovey. So those things will all be kind of coming up. Um, <clears throat> and then you asked, would you do any doll patterns? Yes, I have considered it. The one, yeah, I've, I've considered it. I've been a little bit scared of doll patterns because I love working with Bernat Blanket Yarn and I feel like Bernat Blanket Yarn really lends itself toward um, animals, you know, because we've got that fur, we've got that sort of fluffy texture and humans aren't really fluffy. So, so I, I'm afraid to like switch. I, I feel like I would almost need to switch yarn types. Um, and I don't really want to, <clears throat> but maybe I'm just being too picky and it, like, it would be fine to have a doll in um, Burnett Blanket Yarn. If you guys check out Martini Martis, um, let me, I'll just type it in the comments right here. Um, on Instagram, she has, she also works with Burnett Blanket Yarn and she has a couple of doll patterns. She just came out with um, a Frida Kahlo one, which is really cute. And I know she has a ballerina out. So <clears throat> if you guys like working, excuse me. <clears throat> if you guys like working with Burnett Lincoln Yarn, like I do, she is a, a good, also other resource. Um, she's, I think she's been designing for probably about a year. Um, I haven't actually followed any of her patterns, but I do follow her on Instagram and she makes some really cute work. So, so yeah, 
um, <clears throat> Monica's Monica says, I think purchasing your pattern uh, printing is a convenience. You are producing so many patterns. Even now you are looking at a series of books. Yes, that is true. I would love to. I, I like one of my dreams someday is to like have my books on a shelf. Like, because it sounds amazing to me. Just this idea of like, and here are my books and here are it's exciting to me, but I am not there yet, but I will. Maybe that will be one of the things that happens this year. I have no idea. This year is going to be wonderful. I'm just sure of it. <clears throat> and Rose says, I've been trying to get my hands on the leisure books. The animals in there look very nice. I haven't, um, haven't looked into those yet. I'll have to, have to see. <clears throat> um, going back to the comment, though, about uh making a doll i think i probably will at some point i just i'm not sure because i one of the things i think that could be fun about a doll is because dolls you you mostly need just like one size in my opinion but then you could have a lot of fun with like the hair and the clothes and style and stuff like that like that could be really fun so that's what I've been thinking about. Um, hello, Padma. I'm sorry, you snuck in here and I didn't didn't see you. So I could say hello. Annie says you could do a chubby animal book. I would love that too. Uh, Donna says, hi, I love Amigur Rumi. Thought I was the only one. Just love how, um, how the yarn turns into something wonderful. I absolutely agree, Donna. It makes me very happy to make amigurumi. Um, <coughs> and Erica says she's got the Leisure Baby Specs book off of Amazon. So very nice, very nice. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got something in my throat. I am struggling. <coughs> well, <coughs> I should probably go. This is awful. <laughs> okay I think we're good for a second so I'm going to wrap up here thank you everyone for being on the chat today and um, happy happy new year to everyone thank you for sharing your, your goals hopefully we'll all get through some whips this year I need to write down mine now that we've talked about a few of them here you know finishing the Christmas book working with the whips um <coughs> maybe making a doll, putting out some, some more tutorials, come, come up with a, a good list of guidance for the year, shall we say, because I think that would be very helpful. Um, but yeah, remember this week, you guys will be seeing more of those videos coming out on how to assemble. Hopefully those will be helpful for you guys. And if you're not working on any projects like that right now, you can just save that for later. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that. Monica says storybooks to go along with the stuffies. Million dollar idea. That would be adorable. My husband is a good story writer, so I keep telling him like he needs to write write stories for me because I can't. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that would be really, really fun. We probably will. We probably will at some point. At least give it a try, right? Who even knows? Um all right. Thank you, Coleman, for asking, well, wishing me to get better soon. I, I will. I'm sure. I'm staying positive. Anyway, thank you all for being here. I'll talk to you guys again next week, January 11th. So take care. Love you all. Thank you for, thank you for your support and for chatting with me and for being my friends. Oh, thank you, April. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, too. Bye, everyone. <laughs>